But before I do that, I just want to remind everybody that Dr. Anthony Lewis makes $236,530 a year. Just got a $10,000 uh, raise last month um, <clears throat> from the board there. Uh, another uh, another administrator there who's a county commissioner, his name is Patrick Kelly, I don't makes $109,938 uh, so, there. Dr. Spees, if you have comments about individual staff, it's not allowed. Thank you, Kelly. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Can he hear us? No. I can't hear you guys on WebEx. We'd have to start the WebEx in the meeting, and we haven't done that. Can you text him that he cannot say? Can you all hear me now? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Oh, okay, I got cut off because I was mentioning uh, staff salaries. Um, anyways, this past week there was a student in USD 497 district uh, at the Lawrence College and Career Center, and she stood up can't, and said she can't speak cannot about wear a mask and does Spies. not want to wear a mask. Dr. Spees, you, if you have a complaint Yo, man, or doing? individual comment doing about a student, we have to hear that in executive session. We're not allowed to talk about individual students. Why do you guys keep muting me, man? Stop muting me. You're not muted. This, this is true stuff. She was told by staff Were you, that there were studies, to, um, upon, studies upon studies upon studies that showed that masks do not. Yo, man, this stuff is true. First, we have um, Pastor Leo Barbie. Is Pastor Barbie here? Okay. Uh, to the board, uh, to Superintendent Lewis, to the board, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to just speak to you very briefly. Uh, and I just want to uh, first introduce myself, uh, say a few words uh, to Superintendent Lewis a few words and a few words to you this brief word to superintendent lewis i'll say this without any apology that i'm convinced that the lord has brought you here and i want to say to you do not be intimidated to leave here you've been here been pointed divine i believe that god has brought you here from a divine appointment and i say this do not let anyone or anything intimidate you to leave this community because you are a blessing. Sarah Smith, um, I'm a mom of four, two at New York, two at Central, um, but I want to talk about my son Micah today. He's 10. Uh, Micah has had behavioral problems, uh, low frustration tolerance, and aggressive outbursts for as long as I can remember. Um, He's been in therapy since toddlerhood and has, was able to graduate from therapy at about age eight. Um, and, but throughout that therapy process, he was diagnosed with uh, ODD, which is a positional defiance disorder. He also presents with symptoms of ADHD and anxiety. Long story short, he has a very, very, very short fuse. <laughs> he was able to graduate from therapy due to the diligent work of his therapist, but more importantly, and arguably, um, they put probably more work into it, are his teachers, his counselors, his RAPS worker, um, the principal at New York, and the other staff that is at New York currently. Um, it was a lot of hard work um, to get to where we are, and the New York teachers and staff have stood behind him, worked with us and his therapist, and created a safety plan for him. These teachers in that building are his safe space. He's currently in the fourth grade with Sarah Edmonds, an amazing educator. Sarah is compassionate, hardworking, patient, and kind to him, and Micah does not always make that easy. Samantha Saltz, who is here today, <laughs> his former first grade teacher and her classroom are the safe space he escapes to when he needs to decompress and get away from his peers. She is the trusted adult he seeks out first when things get overwhelming for him. Shane Hyman, his third grade teacher, is there to lend an ear to him and all of his other students always. Shane led Micah's third grade class through the unpre unprecedented pandemic and remote learning with grace, kindness, and humor. Sonny Halstead, our principal, is equally amazing. 
She has attended all of our parent-teacher meetings with us and has helped us strategize and maintain MICA's 504 plan. Then there are the counselors, some of Francis Rapp's work, or Mr. Michael, uh, who are always ready to meet with MICA should he need a little bit of extra encouragement. This team of teachers and staff, they are in MICA's corner. They want to see him succeed academically, but also emotionally. Good evening. Hello, my name is Emily Bodeker, and I'm a teacher at Woodlawn and Cordley Elementary Schools. One of my jobs as a teacher is to highlight and amplify student voices whenever necessary. Because of this, I'm going to spend the rest of my allotted time playing audio from a video that was originally going to be shown during public commentary tonight. I know you said you received these videos. These student voices need to be public. They wanted them to be so and on the record. I want to ensure that you and the others in attendance here hear from students tonight. Thank you, Helen, for being here. Their classroom teachers recorded this video while they were completing a unit on persuasive writing and a unit on community and social studies. Their essential question was, why is it important to participate in your community? Moving forward, I implore you to think about the qualitative data these students present when talking about their schools and the teachers who care for them. The first question is, what's one word to describe Woodlawn? Safe. Love. Home. Family. Safe. Home. Unique. Woodlawn is happy. Polite. It's great. This is all perfect. The staff. My name is Dr. Justin Spies. I have a PhD from uh, Kansas State in uh, human development. And I want to talk with you about a couple of words tonight. Um, the words uh, you guys are uh, familiar with. And those words are uh, empowerment and consent. <clears throat> and then a word you're not familiar with courage. But before I do that, I just want to remind everybody that Dr. Anthony Lewis makes $236,530 a year, just got a $10,000 uh, raise last month um, <clears throat> from the board there. Uh, another, bo uh, another administrator that, who's a county commissioner, his name is Patrick Kelly, I don't makes $109,938 uh, so Dr. Spies, if you have comments about individual staff, it's not allowed. Thank you, Kelly. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Can he hear us? No. We can't hear you guys on WebEx. We'd have to start the WebEx in the meeting, and we haven't done that. Can you text him that he cannot say? You don't hear me now? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Oh, okay, I got cut off because I was mentioning uh, staff salaries. Um, anyways, this past week there was a student in USD 497 district uh, at the Lawrence College and Career Center, and she stood up can't, and said she can't speak cannot about wear a mask and does Spies. not want to wear a mask. Dr. Spies, you, if you have a complaint Yo, man, you or an individual you comment about a student, we have to hear that in executive session. We're not allowed to talk about individual students. Why do you guys keep muting me, man? Stop muting me. You're not muted. This, this is true stuff. She was told by staff we that there were studies, to, um, we upon, studies that the... upon studies that showed that masks do not. Yo, man, this stuff is true. They just cut me out. That's okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, Dr. Lewis and the school board. My name is Brady Swenson. I am a parent to two children at Woodlawn and just wanted to express to you my gratitude for your work. Um, as someone who is from a family of mental and emotional health issues, a long history, uh, including myself and my daughter, uh, we have very much appreciated the support, the absolutely extraordinary support that she has received at Woodlawn Elementary. Um, it's been, uh, well, I mean, she's in fifth grade now. We've been through uh, basically know every single teacher in that building. They all know my daughter and they know her struggles and everyone there is united in supporting her in, in that entire building. It's an extremely safe place for her. Um, uh, my name is Dr. Justin Spies. Um, 
each week I've been going to the county commissioners meeting and reminding them that uh, I haven't forgotten what they've uh, done to the community, to the kids in the schools, and to me personally. And I'm going to do the same for you guys as well. I'm going to hold you guys accountable as well. And it's not just you. It's not just the county commissioners. It's everyone. Everyone that treated us like second-class citizens thought it was okay to abuse children. So I want you to consider this your bi-weekly reminder. And just because we don't meet every week, don't be thinking that I haven't forgot. Even next Monday, when there's no meeting, know that I haven't forgot. Dr. Lewis, you... Uh, wanted a job in another state. Why is that? You don't like it here? Justin, we, burnt, will, Justin we are not going to call out individuals. Well, you know, a couple meetings ago, Dr. Lewis had one of his okay, friends. We're going to mute him. Thank you, Justin. We're going to move on to the next agenda item. All right, whatever. My name is Dr. Justin Spies, and the school board doesn't allow me to speak directly or about uh, directly to or about board members, which also includes not being able to address Superintendent Lewis. So instead of doing that this evening, I thought I'd read a little story I wrote earlier today, and it goes like this here. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a school superintendent named Lewis Anthony, who was determined to run his school district okay, into the ground. We're going to mute you. You are violating our policy. Thank you. Next on the agenda is board commentary. All right, so my name is Dr. Justin Spies, uh, and I've tried to, I've written a, a little story. I tried to read it last time. I got censored for some reason because I included a name that wasn't anybody up there on the stage, so I'm not including any names. It's a fictional story. It's ain't about you guys up there. Lose your egos. All right, so once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a school superintendent who was determined to run his school and district into the ground with his unnecessary overreach into the lives of the families of Never Never Land. The superintendent was a proud man, but because of that, he was driven by arrogance and a thirst for power. He was so scared of words and the truth that he censored a guy who spoke words he didn't like and the truth he hoped to avoid. So this superintendent and his merry band of school board members would only allow the guy to talk online at school board meetings, which made it as easy as pushing a button on a tablet to kick him out of the meetings if they didn't like the words he strung together in his sentences. Each time they threw this citizen out of the school board meetings, they would say to him, you aren't allowed to directly address any particular board member, which includes the superintendent. <clears throat> At the last meeting, this citizen, who by all accounts is a hell of a guy, was censored and hung up on during his comments for simply asking why the superintendent applied for another job in his home state, and if it had to do with him not liking his current superintendent job, and if so, why did he no longer like his job in Never Never Land? Seemed like reasonable and appropriate questions to ask, given the importance of the situation. I mean, how else do you find out why the superintendent doesn't like this job and therefore felt it necessary to apply somewhere else, right in the middle of a disaster in the school district that he created? However, a recent school board meeting public comment was opened by the superintendent's close friend and pastor who proceeded to, no cap, slobber all over the superintendent for a full three minutes. Couldn't gush over him enough. It was over the top and purposely so. So that was perfectly fine for this uh, superintendent's good friend to talk directly about him. But asking why the superintendent isn't committed to the students, schools, and families is suddenly off limits and the punishment for doing so is to be immediately banished from the meeting and censored. But this superintendent was also profoundly incompetent at his job as superintendent. Enrollment fell through the basement floor. A massive deficit was created by his short-sightedness and ego. You see, this superintendent's ego was his Achilles heel. One day, the superintendent had his ego bruised by some street corner protesters calling loud on his massive and inexplicable $236,350 salary as he, drive, as he drove by, so he tried to run them over with his car twice during one incident. No charges were filed by the authorities because, well, apparently in Never Never Land, a car driven by an angry man that's traveling at any rate of speed somehow is non-threatening at all, and the pedestrians aren't believed when they say they fear for their lives. But this isn't a fairy tale ending. Sadly, for all parties involved, this superintendent get the, didn't get the new job he applied for, though, though the Never Never Land papers made it seem like he was a shoe in. Word is, he didn't get the job because the new school district got word of him trying to run over three protesters with his car and decided that ain't a good look. Somehow, Never Never Land doesn't think it's a bad look, so he's still here burning things to the ground. So now the citizens of Never Justin, Never you're Land. Done. Thank you. Can right. we mute his Thank mic? You. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Erica. Um, first of all, I want to clarify for the public that um, this board has never prevented someone from coming to the board and speaking 
um, about board members. Uh, we've listened to lots of public comments saying that we've done good things and saying that we've done bad things. Um, and we have never prevented somebody from saying those things to us because as elected officials, that is part of our duty and responsibility when we provide a limited public forum such as public comment at our board meetings. However, it is uh, our policy in this district that we do not um, have people come to public comment and air complaints about specific employees of this district during public comment. And uh, we will be enforcing that policy. Uh, we have tried to enforce it in the past and we will continue to enforce that policy in the future. So I just wanted to make sure the public understood that. 